Okay, this is section 7.3, and this is a hypothesis test for the population mean small sample. So there's not much new about this. We're just dealing with uh, small sample sizes, which uh, will involve the t-score then, and Excel will calculate that for us. So let's go ahead and do this problem. It says the university states that the mean number of classroom hours per week for full-time faculty is less than 11 hours. Right here, less than 11 hours tells me that this is a alternate hypothesis that they're giving me less than 11 hours, and it's about the mean. So if mu is less than 11, is the claim right there, the alternate hypothesis. That automatically makes this a left tail test and automatically makes the null hypothesis mu is greater than or equal to 11. I says a random sample of, a, of the number of classroom hours for full-time faculty for one week is listed to the right. Right here, we got it. And uh, you work for a student organization or asked to test this claim at the point 01 alpha level. So that's the alpha level we're going to run this at. And do you have enough evidence to reject the university's claim? Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's see. We'll, we'll see what happens here with this. Um, assume the number of hours taught to be normally distributed. We have to do that because we have a sample size less than uh, 30. Now, this data here is on your data sheet on the Excel sheet. So on the Excel sheet, if you go clear up to the end, you can do that by clicking right here. That takes you to the last sheet. You can be on the data sheet. And then on that, you'll find a little sheet here that says uh, a 7-3 example one hours teaching. So let's get this data right here. Copy it. And then go to your one mu sheet. So we got to go far here to the left until we get to the one mu sheet and now this is raw data that you can put in right here on that one mu sheet and I'll do a right mouse click and pay special as values get those in there get rid of all your other values I'm just going to highlight them and uh, I don't know how much data I got in there but get rid of the rest so there's all my data in there and then so here's my average amount of, uh, of uh, hours taught for these uh, eight uh, faculty members at some university and here's the standard deviation right there. So click the yes button or manually copy and paste special those values over to every place. Well, there's only one place you really need them and that's because we're doing a left tail test. So uh, now it doesn't put everything over here for you. It put in the uh, mean and we can see, see it put in the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and the sample size everywhere we need it. We're doing a left tail test, so we are uh, right here in this area, and we have to put in the claimed mean, and I believe that was 11 when you look at the problem, and it said to run this at the 0.01 alpha level. See, less than 11, so that's your mu, that's your border line there, 11, and then your alpha level is 0.01. So let's go ahead and put that in, your alpha level of 0.01, and at this point, we're pretty much done. Uh, do not reject the null hypothesis. So if you do not reject the null hypothesis, we are unable to support the claim that the average uh, is significantly less than 11, that the average hours taught is significantly less than 11 hours per week. And uh, now even though our average was 10.05, which is almost a whole hour less than 11 hours, we're not able to reject it that uh, this null hypothesis, that it's greater than or equal to 11. Why? Well, this is a very, very small sample size, and uh, it's not, a, you know, a larger sample size, we would have been able to reject it, but with this small of a sample size, we cannot say with this level of accuracy, you know, this is like being nine, at least 99% sure with this alpha level of 0 0.01, just take 0 0.01 subtract it from 100% you get 99% so this is like saying are you 99% sure that the average hours taught by all faculty at this college at this particular college that they're dealing with here is less than uh, 11 uh, definitely not can't say that because we've got such a small sample and um, uh, now my question is would we be able to reject this at any standard alpha level well look at your p-value here's your p-value which is 0.1577 and that's greater than any standard alpha level that we would ever use like if we'd go up to clear up to 0.1 that's the highest we would go we still get do not reject the null hypothesis so we just cannot say this right here we are unable to show that the average hours taught is significantly less the average hours taught by all the faculty members at this college is significantly less than 11 hours per week. We just can't uh, show that, even though the sample mean was 10.05. And uh, so there's not enough evidence to uh, support that claim right there.
okay, we can't show that claim. We're unable to show that. And here it is worked out for you right there. Okay, there's not enough evidence to support the claim. At the 0.01 alpha level, I was unable to show that the uh, uh, number of uh, the average number of classroom hours per week for full-time faculty is going to be less than 11. Unable to show that. And then this is showing how you would do it without Excel. You'd have to work out the T-score using your X bar minus mu times the square root of N over S formula. You'd have to get the uh, critical value off of a T-table that's at the end of the book. And uh, the degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size, so your degrees of freedom would be 7. And then you would compare the two. Uh, let's see, here's your test statistic. Here's your critical values. Uh, this is your critical value for the uh, left tail test, negative 2.99. That doesn't hit in there. This is not, this test statistic doesn't fall into the, the tail. It's not less than negative 2.99. Now, could you reject at any alpha level? We already talked about that. You try 0.1. Look, p value is greater than that alpha level. You can't reject that uh, null hypothesis at any alpha level. And uh, that's pretty much it with that. Um, and this is talking about, again, doing it without Excel. Uh, you'd have to look at the values up in the T-table to realize it. Uh, a lot of people write summaries. Uh, when they do, they, they write the p-value. Like if somebody was able to s show something at the 0.001 alpha level, that must mean your p-value was what? Less than 0.001. Okay, if you're... If, triple zero one alpha level. If you're able to show something, then your p-value must be less than point triple zero one. So some people use p-values to write it instead of alpha level uh, because your p-value would have to be less than this alpha level or your p-value would be, have to be less than point double zero one to reject it at the point oh oh one alpha level. And that's all that's showing. And then finally here, at any alpha level, if you're unable to show something, you could just say, I was unable to show it, and say your p-value must have been greater than what? 0.1. Okay, so we'll stop there, and uh, uh, that's section 7.3.